the Freedom Isn't Free show. We have the best hockey player I've ever seen pound for pound in my life, played with, seen, what have you, in my life, Nathan Gerby from right down the road. We're right down the road from each other, actually. Grew up in Oxford. I was in Clarkston, so um, lucky to play with against him for a little bit early on in life and then play with him for a little bit. And then he's gone on to do incredible, incredible things. Um, so I'm, I'm just super excited to have you on, man. And like we haven't, you know, over the years, you have a growing family. I have a growing family. I haven't been able to stay connected like, you know, like you want to with everybody over the years. And uh, I just appreciate you coming on and uh, chatting for a little bit. Thank you. Oh, I'm excited to be on. It's uh, it's funny when you think back. I mean, we we might have started what when we're ten years old, yep. maybe of knowing each other, playing against each other, and and look how long that's been since yep. we've known each other. So it's funny to think uh, to look back and and think of actually how long have we we've known each other. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. It's um, it's funny because one of the one of the things I had written down to to bring up to you, which is something that I'm sure you probably you know you wouldn't remember this, but it was a uh, the first like memory I have of you is uh we were probably about 10 because I think you know you know you're on honey baits I was on Caesars like nine obviously in Michigan was at least back in the day was when you could start playing triple a so we played together that first year and I think or, or to, against each other and then I think the first maybe second year I was probably 10 years old like you said I remember my first memory of you was um you you, you guys are trashing us which you did that all often that first year or two and uh yeah. We were, it was an empty net and you were going down. I was empty net on our side. You were going down. I was chasing you down. And I remember two handing you as hard as I could and thinking like, Oh yeah, like I'll be good. I'm just going to break this guy's arm and like, we'll be fine. <laughs> and you didn't even phase you. You just boom, put it in the empty net and like nothing even happened. And I remember after the game, I remember telling my dad, I was like, dad, I tried to break that kid's arm. Like I hit him as hard as I slashed him as hard as I could. And he just, he didn't even win. See, nothing happened. Still scored. Nothing happened. And that was my first memory of you. And I knew at that point, I was like, yeah, this kid's special. <laughs> uh, that's that's, <laughs> that's my first pretty funny. Memory. I don't remember that exact one. That's, that's pretty funny. Yeah. That's was, awesome. So that, that was my first memory of you. Um, but yeah, like I said in the beginning, I mean, truly you are, you know, pound for pound, the best player I've ever seen in my life. And we've had so many things. I remember in 2000, we were in the all-star game together in Alaska and nationals there. Uh, representing Caesars and Honey Baked, and you're just you know flying around the rink, fastest skater, all that stuff. You're always, you know, th one of the top players in the league. And what stood out to me though uh, about you though was just your heart. And and again, something that I want you to kind of talk a little bit about today. But just that adversity, you know, being you know the smallest player in the NHL to ever exist. I know there's like upper debate. There's always like people like oh you know, this guy whatever. But I mean. You, you have the title in, in my book, the pound for pound, the best, the heart of a lion, the best player I've ever seen in my life. And um, just your tenacity in your heart and the mindset you have is truly something that I always tell people when I, when you come up or when I talk to people about you, I always say the world's lucky he wasn't 6'2 or 6'3. And that's all people need to know about you is that <laughs> there would have been a lot of people, you know, hurt and just, you know, not wanting to go on the ice even if you were 6'2, 6'3. So the world's lucky. So Anyway, I wanted to kind of throw that out there and kind of set the tone with that because people truly need to understand um, what kind of player you are and what kind of person you are and what kind of leader you are. Um, and again, Freedom Isn't Free podcast and also just, you know, the, you know, someone that bleeds with our country, always, you know, um, stay, standing up for freedom and you're always serving. When, when your country calls, you always, you know, put the, put the sweater on and go. So I just wanted to throw all that out there and make sure that people had the right context for, uh, <laughs> for you and who you are. So yeah. what yeah it's amazing it's amazing when you go through a lot of stuff and, and you you think back of what gets you through those times but it's amazing that's the power of believing in yourself um is just amazing like how far that can take you because as you know as every step along the way whatever you want to do there's always people that don't want you to achieve that or don't think you should achieve that or just try any way to put you down. But, you know, like, like you said, I, Hey, if I was six, two, I might not be the same person. I don't know, but I've sure. had an edge on my shoulders since, yep. since day one of birth and, and, you know, it's carried me all this way. But one thing I've always done was I've made sure I put the work into where I would never have to question myself once um, going through any adversity that there is, because I know I could, I could overcome anything with, with the mindset and the power and, and the will of, of getting through it. What, um, 
and that, that leads me into another question that I had for you, which is something that I think this is super, super poignant what you said. And I think this was um, one of the things that looking back on my career and doing a lot of analyzing and uh, just thought on what I could have done better, different things like that. Like your mindset was, you know, elite. It is an elite level mindset. And that was something that I did not have was an elite level mindset. My, like my work ethic physically was awesome, but my mental game was pretty much non-existent and I didn't really know better um, necessarily. And like, I didn't even, I remember at USA, we had you know, psychologists and, you know, things like that. We could have used, them. I know I needed to use them and I didn't because I was scared. You know, we're 16, 17 years old and I, I was like scared of looking weak or things like that. So my mindset was not great. And so like, I look back and I know like, wow, that's something I really had to fix in my life and, and keep working on. So like my question to you is just what were some of those things that you either learned as a kid or, you know, kind of just, you know, knew inherently maybe even, or like you picked up as a kid, uh, what were some of the things that you, that helped you mentally, I guess, just throughout the years, overcome a, a more adversity than the vast majority of people would have to deal with? Well, I think even, even, and you hit it right on the nose. It's amazing what you can do mentally. Um, it's amazing what you can achieve. Um, I, and, and you've seen many people in all the different fields that you always say, geez, how's that guy successful in that field? Or how, how is he doing good in that? But then you get to know people and you see their mindset. It's just at a different level. And that's what separates a lot of people. Um, so to date back to when I was growing up, you know, the way I, and like, cause everybody knows is you. Oh, I, I grew up in a, in a tough household. I grew up in, in, you know, just a pure work mentality household. My father, um, you know, made us realize what hard work was at a young age um, <laughs> a lot of stories and, and, and made that. us realize how you could push past those boundaries. Uh, yeah, a lot of <laughs> stories, but you know, we, yeah, we, I mean, when you're eight years old and, and you're pushing cars around the parking lot, <laughs> you know, that's going to uh-huh. build you mentally up right there because it's just you and the car and there's zero quitting you know it, when you go through stuff like, like that 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 slowly builds your base and you know as I've gotten older I've realized how important it is um, but how, how important it is to work on every day as you said is something that now you have to incorporate in your daily life um, people think oh I did some mental work I'm you know I should be good on and uh, I keep telling people that's the the hardest adversity that I've ever gone through is just my mental thoughts every day that's that's how you control the outcome is how you control your thoughts. And, yeah. you know, people say, Oh, you have so much adversity being small. Not really. Cause you just battle it in your head. That's just the thought of being small. I, I don't think that um, I just go out and try to yeah. play big. So you continually to change that tune in your head. And, and, and that's how I feel like I can, you know, keep, keep controlling my mind, uh, whether it's at home or in, in, at the rink or whatever, I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah. That, I mean, we, yeah, we could talk for hours and hours about that. And, you know, I, I would love to talk to you more about that just as, you know, time goes on, because that's, that's something that, again, you look back and I, re, I like in sports and everything in life, we've all heard a million times. It's, you know, life or hockey or whatever it is, is 90% mental, 10% physical. And that's, like I said, in the beginning, like I, all I worked on was a physical part and I didn't work on the mental part. So like you, you saying all that just really hits a chord with me because it's, you really realize as you get older or, or things happen to you in life, how important that mindset is. Like you said, that is something that no one talks about, which is it's an everyday struggle. It's not like, Oh, I did it once. Like I'm good. I got it. Like it's every single day dealing with your yeah. thoughts and your mindset and choosing which way to think. So that's, that's huge. Yeah. So, um, one of the other stories had, I have a couple of stories. I mean, I have a lot of stories of Nathan and us and all of us, but, um, one of the, one of them, I don't know if you remember this, but we have this on tape. So I know this, this de- definitely did happen was the first tournament we had in, uh, all of us together on the under 17 team. And we were in Russia in Magnitogorsk and we had the mask that we were playing Russia. There was, you know, armed guards in the aisles, you know, all, all the whole, the, you know, the whole gamut. And their the mascot, there's like a wolf or the coyote mascot, and he's like skating around the rink in the dark, the spotlights on him, and he's going around and doing like high fives to everyone on the bench. He comes down the Russian bench, and he comes down our bench, and then you're the last guy on the end of our bench, and all of a sudden you just see like the mascot stumble and his head like spin around and like almost fall 
<laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. We're like sitting there almost like, I don't know if we're going to get shot. I have no idea what's going on. Do you remember doing that? <laughs> I, you know what? I, I haven't thought about that until you brought it up in a long time. But that, you know, I'm, th I'm thankful we were before everybody had phones and videos and 100%. all these social media sites because that would have been everywhere and that probably would have yeah. uh, ended up hurting me in this in the <laughs> NHL draft or something you never know but <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> I do remember that but that's yeah that's that's just a kid who didn't really realize uh what country he was in at that time and, and did something pretty stupid he said he said the tone though I'll tell you that much um dude, that, <laughs> <laughs> so Another, there's another great story. And again, just to kind of go back to um, just, you know, the mindset and just the tenacity that you had. I, I, ha I always tell this story too, that Thank you me. had, it was a guy who ended up playing on our team and he was a foot taller than you. And I remember being at the US, the tryouts, NTV tryouts, you were, you guys were bearing down on each other. I remember thinking like he, he was from the East coast and I was like, this is, this is not a good, good idea, man. Like, this is not a good idea. Don't do this. And he's, I'm sure thinking like, oh, this, this is easy. And you just absolutely ran him over. And it's like, I remember like everyone just being like, stunned, like, whoa. And it was just like, no, like you're, you're going to learn this, this, this young man very quickly. And, um, and again, that's, so talking about USA, um, you went there obviously as an underager too. So you were there, talk a little bit about that, just kind of going to USA as an underager, kind of what that experience was like and, and how that might've helped you a little bit, just progressing in, in the transition to, you know, pro you know more pro hockey and then eventually into the pros yeah it's a, it's a every step you go along the way is always just the reassurance that you're doing things the right way um so you know when you're playing triple play hockey and you make the jump to play as an underager at the national program you you question yourself you have the doubt in your head but but you know the work you put in so until you try it you're, you're, you're unsure. So I was able to go there and get a little bit more confident uh, in what I was doing and how I was preparing, um, how I was able to be physical. You know, I've always, I've always watched a lot of small guys play hockey. My dad used to always have me watch Flurry, and not a lot of small guys um, played with, with such physical uh, presence on the ice. So I think that's something that's always stuck with me when I was younger. Um, I always view myself as small, but I mean, I, I know I can run through anybody, and I love to do that. Like, I love the physical part of the game, and, and I try to bring that. And I, and, and I think it helps me play in any role I can in a lineup. I can kind of move around yeah. on the lineup and be, be used as different roles, and I've always, I've always cherished that. But not a lot of guys will, will run around and try to, try to kill guys. But I, I love doing it since I was a kid. And, you know, it goes back to my dad. He's always, you know, even when I was younger, he always told me uh, – you know, your first shift, I want you to go after the biggest guy. Um, that was that was kind of his mentality, and and that way you set the tone, and and people people will know you really soon, uh, and yeah. know that you're a little crazy. And I think that's that's something I tried to bring when I was younger. Um, you know, it's a little maybe a little scary at first, but then it's something I developed, and I and I and I just love to do. Yeah, that would explain why you and I were always battling when we were kids. Then a <laughs> guy was literally twice your size, and we yeah. would just, we would just go at it. Oh man! It's, oh my gosh! Yeah, uh, too funny. Yeah, I, man, I remember all the battles, but it's it's so funny uh, to go back and it's to go back at like you think of how big that rivalry was, and then you get older and we and, and we're able to play on the same team and yeah. play for our country, and yeah. pretty cool. It's a cool it's a it cool is. moment to have. It really was. It was cool. My, we, it's always something that, again, when you, when you come up or your name comes up or we're talking about playing mini sticks in the living room at my parents' house and my, you know, Drake, my brother, who's now 24 and he was like, you know, six or whatever, seven were in there playing mini sticks with them. It was just funny to think about because we were like, we literally battled for years against each other. And then we became really close, really good friends, you know, six, seven years later. So it's, it's just amazing the hockey world, how that happens. And just the mutual respect you have for people, obviously. And, leading to that actually which you can touch on that but also leading to the award that you you know or just named a finalist for i believe right and uh just you know how did you find out about that and just kind of again the, the sportsmanship aspect and all those things just kind of how the hockey world is so small and um and just again the work ethic the, the award by the way i mean and again i put something on instagram the other day and i know you said something back but it was just that was that's you i mean like that is you so it doesn't surprise me 
yeah, it meant a lot to me. Um, to be nominated, I found out from the, the writers and so and uh, Aaron Ford's line from Columbus uh, informed me. And it's some, not something I felt about. It's the third, third time I've been nominated for the awards. So it's every time just very special. And, and this time meant a lot more because um, just, yeah, just, just the last few years. I've had, so I've had seven surgery repairs in the last 15 months. Um, so just to be able to come back and, and continue to work. Um, yeah. yeah, I've had to work harder, more dedication from my wife, from my family. Uh, more sacrifice here and there trying to get back you know you you go through that mental battle that we talk to can I get back I'm getting older now uh you know thoughts in your head I'm the oldest guy in Columbus can I even get up there and play again after having all these surgeries but yeah to come up and do it you know it, it means a lot and it's just like I said before something that that lets you know that you you keep going you're doing things the right way um so hey sometimes you get opportunities and sometimes you don't but, but what I can control is what I do every day. And when that opportunity came, I wanted to take the most of it. And, you know, I'm very thankful and, and grateful for that, for that nomination. And hopefully, hopefully can have a chance to win it. But yeah, it, it means a lot because I know exactly how much work it's been to, to get back to this point and, and to be where I am. Yeah, no, that's huge, man. Congrats, seriously. I mean, hopefully you do win this time. As like you said, you've been up a few times and I mean, you deserve it. And that's, that's for sure. I mean, it's like, I, it, it's, it sounds cliche and it's just like, oh yeah, Brandon's talking to, you know, his buddy he grew up with and like, he could just say that. But I mean, truly you, I mean, pound for pound, you are the best hockey player I've ever seen in my life. And I've been very fortunate to see a lot of amazing hockey players and a lot that are in the NHL and it's, uh, you know, it's just, you deserve it. So hopefully, hopefully you do get it, man. It's seriously. Um, what, oh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah. Very yeah, nice. absolutely. Um, what is, as we were talking off the air before we came out a little bit, but um, you know, actually we can touch on that in a minute, but, Give me th- so kind of transitioning from your mindset, just you know, like th- things you learned as a kid into you know go be- at, being at USA and then you know into at, going to Boston College, being at BC, and then you know being in the you know, finals for the Hobie Baker, the best player in college hockey, and then going to the pros, being in the NHL and being in the NHL. Talk a little bit about that transition and just maybe some things you learned, maybe some you know some things that really stuck stuck out to you through that transition period in your life. Because obviously, I mean it's crazy because like hockey players or or athletes go through a lot of those, you know, really interesting stages of life. Like, you know, as we see in the world, there are a lot of crazy things going on. Generally a lot of it is, you know, you get like 18 to like 24, 25 year old people. Well, there's athletes doing that, like living life, but also like have this thing they're doing on top of all that. So maybe touch on like some things that, you know, again, you went through some mindset stuff, stuff that, you know, adversities that kind of helped you or, or grew you through that time period. Yeah, it's, you know, the, the transition, the transition itself, as you know, it, it goes fast. You know, yeah. I, I, it's you know, one year you're at the program, then you're quickly in college, then you're, then you're playing in pro, and it, you just blink of an eye, it goes fast. Yeah. But when I think back at a huge turning point in my mindset was probably the NHL draft. I, I you know, a lot of people, you know, would have been happy to be drafted at, at fifth round. But, yeah. you know, that was one of my darker days that I've had in a long time because that that was a day where I felt like I've competed with the best in the world at every international stage there was, but yes. then you get to the draft and teams tell you, well, oh, we'll take you second round, possibly, right. possibly a late first rounder, probably, you know, early second. Yeah. And then you go in the fifth round. And yeah, yeah, I remember that day, that, that day probably, you know, changed my mindset a lot in terms of how much work I was going to put in because man, I, I <laughs> I would describe that day. It was a very, very, very dark day. I was just, yeah, I remember being so angry. I, I cried. I went and ran for miles. I shot pucks in the garage for hours. Yep. Um, yeah, I remember my agent called me because I didn't even know at the time I was drafted because I quit watching on the computer, yeah. and, and yeah. I didn't even care. I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, let's get going. I'm like, yeah, I was just ready to go. So I was ready to get to college. Um, you know, for me, there was no bull crap aside in college. I was had one goal and one goal only. And that, and that was to help help this team win a national championship and get out of here. That That's all yeah. I had on my mind. Um, you know, able to go through each year of going to the national championships and you guys end up beating us the second year. Yeah. Um, but then you get to the third year and this is like your own, this is, in my opinion, this is like, this is the last chance I'm going to have because I'm going to leave after this year anyways. So I'm going out with a bang. I'm making sure we win this thing and I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, it's funny when you go through college, you have all players at different 
mindsets and different levels. You have kids that are just trying to stay on the team. You have walk-ons that are just happy to be here. Um, you have kids that want to maybe do something else, not hockey in life. But then you have a few guys who really have the mindset to go to the next level and try to play in the NHL. And that's, and that's kind of the, the area where I stuck to and, and made sure I put the work in every single day. Did you, um, yeah, those are, yeah, that's, thank you for sharing that. Cause I know some of those things are, are tough for sure to, to talk about. Do you, um, your path, which again, you, you did an incredible job really at each one of those levels is, is there, are you, when you look back, you're like, Hey, I'm glad I went that route. Or you, you're like, Hey, I, I wish I would have gone another route. Or do you have anything in you know, any of those thoughts? No, I don't. Honestly, I, I'm so thankful to go the routes I've had, um, meet the people I've had, been influenced by people. Uh, yeah. Gotten to know so many good people and have good relationships that I'm very, very grateful. I truly believe that if a player is good enough and he has, has the mindset to get there, they'll get there. It doesn't yeah. matter what route they're going to take. Um, for me, I love going to college. I had a great time, uh, great coaching staff, great, great uh, – great boss boss college is a great organization for hockey yeah. but the great school to attend so yeah very thankful to have gone there and, and I, I wouldn't have changed a thing yeah no it's I mean it's uh, I would expect you to say because I feel like you know you talk to most successful people and they, that's what they say right like hey I learned I went there and there was a reason I went there and I learned what I needed to learn because I went that route and like you said I think you hit the nail on the head people are going to make it if they're if they're committed that mindset and, and determined enough they're going to make it no matter where they are so I, I think you're spot on what um yeah. Do you think after the draft, do you think it was more of a, was it a more of a mindset switch to you? Like, Hey, I've got to get even stronger mentally, or was it more of like, Hey, I got to go, like you said, I'm going to go run physical, or was it a combination of both? What kind of, what switch, I guess, turned for you more after the draft? I, th I think it was a combination of both. I mean, I became kind of like a workaholic. Um, you know, when I got to school, I mean, I was, I mean, I was training at 6 a.m. I was on the ice at like 10, 10 a.m. Then I was getting, going to classes. Then I was back in the gym before practice at 2.30. And then I'd stay in the gym after practice. Like, I just became such a workaholic because I think, you know what, it, you know what it, I think the draft did to me? Because I've always been around the best, played at the top of the best. Um, then I always on the leaderboards of, of the top players in tournaments. And so not, not that I think that it was given to me um, because I thought I deserved to be it. But maybe at that point I realized, oh, this is this is a business, and I'm gonna have to earn. I'm gonna have to reshow what I can do and how I can play with the best again. I think that was more of the mindset because I, I need to put more work in. Because I maybe at, maybe at that point I thought I just did enough to deserve to be at a a higher spot in the draft and and, and given maybe a better chance. But you know, at that point, then I realized, hey, I gotta put I gotta put much more work into to make them realize this. Yeah, dude, it's, it's fascinating that you say that because, I mean, again, truly, you were, you know, when we were kids growing up and, and at the program and stuff, I mean, you were a weight room warrior. You you did work harder than everybody else. And so it's it's interesting to hear you say that. And again, not everyone knows you and who you are, obviously. So it's funny to hear you say that because you were that person who was already doing that. And it's I think it's very important for people hearing this to know like, Hey, when you think you've given it all, you haven't. Right. And I know that's kind of the David Goggins. There's people out there now that talk yeah. about that and all you know, we've only give 40%, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's so huge because you were the person that was doing that. And it's like, Hey, I have another gear or three gears that I can get to and need to go to. So, yeah, no, that's, a, that's an important mindset because so many, I, and you've met so many people that, that think they work hard, right. Until you get surrounded by people who yeah. work way harder then you're like, Oh crap. Like I'm not even <laughs> coming close. And, and we've all been around people in our lives like that. And they're all good wake up calls because you know, so many times they, that you think you're at the max and uh, you know, you're definitely not. There's always, there's always, and I always tell people I can work, I can raise my work level each day as long as I do the right things to recover eat the right foods, get the right sleep, and tomorrow I can work harder than today, and then the next day I can work harder than that day. I, I don't think there's a limit, and, and that's been my mindset. There's no limit. You're not, you know, I would never show up at the rink and complain about doing, you know, physical testing or all the skating or anything because I, I enjoy it. I really do. Yeah, people, you know, what, what I've learned is I've learned to love that process. I've learned the love to grind. 
um, because that that defines me more than anything is is willing to grind in the hardest times I, I love that yeah yeah and it's, again that's it, it's funny because like I've I've had you know again you I think of the people I played with over time the people that um the freedom isn't free you know show the thing the, doing this I mean type of stuff it's those are all kinds of those things I've thought of I've thought of you over the years, just different stuff. And the people I know that it's whether a different adversity people have had or just how hard, you know, certain people would work. And it's like you said, there's those different times, you, you know, different challenges you kind of, you know, face. And it's like, hey, you're going to dig down into that, that cookie jar, as Goggin says, and, and pull up a memory and say, I've done this before. I can do this again, um, whatever it might be. So, yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that because that is, again, yeah. I really feel like that epitomizes you and who you are. Um, who are some... Um, who are some people that you look up to, um, whether it's you know, on ice, guys that you play with now even, or guys that you have played with, or again, like other people outside of hockey, um, who are people that you've looked up to, I guess we'll say when you were growing up and then also like now, who are some of those mentors, people you've kind of looked up to or emulated or. Yeah, I looked up, uh, I mean, first and foremost, I looked up to my dad. I looked up to my, my family, my siblings, my brothers, uh, the amount of work ethic that was established in our house was just, there was no other way. That's what I always try to tell people. Yeah. People always ask me, I'm like, I don't know another way. I don't, I've never been taught another way. My, my parents worked, we're the youngest of six kids and my parents worked endlessly to, to just provide us food. Um, and, and that to me meant, means a lot. And I cherish that because, you know, as you, as you have kids and I couldn't imagine being in the place that they were at, Yep. And you're just scraping to put food on the table every day. But there, I never heard them complain. You know, I've never heard my, I've never heard my dad complain. You know, he, all he did was just work harder. And I think it's so, yeah. so funny that that's the similar mindset that I have now is I hate complaining. You won't get it out of me. And I hate it around me. You know, I won't point fingers. Um, you know, first and foremost, I'll look in the mirror and, 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 and dig down and work harder. But yeah, probably my dad is who I looked up to the most. And then as, as you play the game and watch more people, Martin St. Louis was always a guy who I, I loved to be around when I was. Uh, yeah. But I loved to watch him. And I was able to train with him in Connecticut about, now it'll be about eight years ago. And that was another big moment for me where I said, okay, I need to raise my work level. Okay. And, and like yeah. we always said, we meet people that, you know, we were like, okay, I need to beat that guy because, you know, he's playing at such a high level. He's doing it. You know, yeah. he's breaking barriers. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to see what he's doing. I, I'm, I worked with the same trainer and I used to always ask the trainer every morning, like when I used to come in, cause it was always one-on-one -on -one workouts and I'd be like, Oh, what did, Mar what did Marty do today? What are you doing? Like, you know, what did, you know, what did Marty squat today? Like, yeah. oh, what did Marty do on the sled today? I'm like, okay. You know, so that was always in my head. And it's funny when I think that, I mean, Marty at that time was much older than I am. So, you know, he's doing that at such an older age. But, yeah, just, just to be around people like that, someone I idolize, um, someone who was super friendly to me. And, and, you know, I could ask him for advice at any time. You know, he, he, he taught me a lot um, in terms about the power of belief because that's, that's one person, if, you, if you've ever met him and talked to him, he has such a mindset that you, you know, whatever he's doing, he's going to be good at, and he's going to achieve it because there's, there's no other option for him in his mind. Um, so it's to be around people like that, you learn. And I always tell everybody, watch everyone and take what you want. Um, I love to watch people and see what they do, but it doesn't mean I have to do what they do, but I might take one or two pieces from somebody and try to implement them in my own life. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's well said because it's, you know, in the personal development space, you hear that all the time, right? Like you can learn something from everyone, whether it's things yeah. not to do or things to do. So yeah. I think that's, that's well said. Um, what are some going back really quick? What are some, uh, cause again, there was a million stories. I know we kind of, we kind of rushed by it earlier, but like some stories with your dad, your siblings, whatever, I, there was literally a million and it was like, yeah, these stories spread like wildfire for when you were, when we were kids for whatever reason. And, um, what are some, I'll let you share maybe one or two, like yeah. you said, I know the car pushes, stuff like that. Maybe some stories that, you know, growing up, um, that uh, your dad guys put you through the ringer, or, uh, the siblings, everyone maybe. Yeah. That's it's, it's funny to think back because in now having kids myself, 
So I always try to think of how I want to raise my kid. What are the values that I want my kids to know? Um, I'm not far off from being my dad. I, I know that. <laughs> you know, no, I've already I'm... have my kids at the track. I've already have them running. Uh, because you know what? I've, I've learned such great value and lessons doing that. As much as I hated it sometimes as a kid, but now those are my favorite memories because that built who I am now. Yeah. That built yeah. You know, that, those yeah. hard times, um, and, and to give people a background, you know, my, my dad, his thing was, if, you, if you're not going to work at the ring, I guarantee you you're going to come work later. And, and that was his motto. So after every game that he didn't think I played good, not only games, I was judged on practices too. So yeah. a lot of people don't understand that, my yeah. mindset. When I go into <laughs> practice, each practice to me is I approach it as a game. Like I'm not losing. I remember if I used to lose a conditioning drill, like Jesus, I'd get in the car and you thought I did the worst thing. And no lie, after, after bad games, if I didn't work hard enough, you know, five, four or five miles from home, that car would pull over and my dad would say, get out. And I remember being like, what do you mean get out? He would like, get out. You're running in front of the car. And then I would run home. But that, that happened for probably, probably eight years, eight years straight. Wow. That if I've ever had a bad practice and a bad game of not working hard, I was running home. Yep. I was learning. You know, you learn. And not only that, then he would pull into parking lots and we would push cars. My brothers, my sisters, they would push cars. We all, we all push cars around the parking lot. And people would always ask, oh, is your car broken? You need help? My dad would be like, no, I'll continue on. Like, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was, you know, we, uh, uh... you know, the lessons you learn from that you know, it's pretty incredible. I just started developing a, a work ethic. And, and of course, there's pushback as a kid, a kid's always going to push back. And I push back right. on my father. And, but I had my brothers doing it, my sisters were doing it. <laughs> so again, there was a level of accountability yeah. that I had no choice. Um, so I started obviously doing it and, and doing it a lot. But yeah, his thing was, you're going to work. And, you know, another another quick story was that we you know, we didn't like, we don't, we didn't lie as kids. And my dad used to work late. He worked construction. So he would come home maybe nine, 10 o'clock at night. And he would always come in our room, knock on the door, open it up. We may be sleeping. And he would be like, you know, did you guys work out today? And I couldn't say, yeah, if I didn't, you know, cause just <laughs> your, your own personal, yeah. Personal uh, belief there wouldn't, wouldn't work. So I, I, I would say, no, I didn't. And he'd flick the light on and he didn't care what time it was. He said, get up, let's go. And then you get up at that time in, in the middle of the night and, and get working. And you're the original yeah, Peter Goggins. I think you're yeah, no, I mean, I mean people don't realize what, what, you know, we went through, but you know what, when you, when I look at what my dad did, he worked construction and, and that's another thing we had to do. We had always had to work with him in the summers to realize how hard it is. And, but he, he taught us the only way he knew how to teach us to work hard because he knew that he, he needs to tell us, I don't care if you play hockey, soccer. I don't care if you're a doctor, whatever you want to be. If you don't have that work ethic every single day, you're not going to do anything. And, and that was his message to me, my sisters uh, and my, and my brothers that I don't care what you're doing. If you don't have this work ethic, you're, you're going nowhere. So until you develop the work ethic and, and, and have that, then, then you can start, you know, getting somewhere. But yeah, he, he, uh, he did what he could do at that point in his life and he did it well. I tell you that, but yeah, yeah a lot of, a lot of funny heart stories, um, a lot of crying days at the track. I mean, running miles after miles, you know, I mean, that it's, amazing. you know, I love it and I'm going to raise my kids based off some of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And it's, and that's what every generation should do hopefully is like take the good and from what your parents did and, you know, leave the bad and like, again, keep evolving. Right. So yeah, that's, that's one of those things where, yeah. again, I, you feel like you can't help but think that kids nowadays probably need a little bit more of that in their life, you know, like a little bit more pushing, right. A little bit yeah. less reward and a little, you know, like you need a little bit more of that in your life. Yeah. That way, you know, like you said, the, the sense of, you know, pride of ownership of what you're doing, the ownership of, my my res my effort I'm giving and things like that I mean that's that's so huge and um you know I just you can't help but think when you hear those stories that you tell you know wow I I really feel like there should be other people out there doing more of that and kids doing more of that and um yeah so yeah thank you for sharing that it's, again I know it's uh you know oh you're <laughs> welcome I, I agree man like kids 
kids now, I don't think they've gone to that level of desperation of work. And it's amazing what you teach, but my wife and I recognize what, you know, what I was able to go through and how that kind of shaped your mindset. But if I, and and you may be the same, if I had to give you two things that I just want my kids to know, that's it. All all I want to teach my kids is respect and work ethic. That's it. Like if I, if I had to stop it there, that's all I wanted to teach them. Then, that, then that's it. I'd be happy. But yeah. you know, in order to do that, you need to be pushed through, through a bit of a hard times and, and, yeah. and, and I'll be a lot more communicative than my dad and show a little bit more love than right. my dad. But, right. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that edge of pushing will never, never be there because the, you know, I, I tell my kids now there's two words I never want to hear. I can't, don't say it around me. That's as bad as saying a swear word. So don't say it. I always tell my kids that I don't want to hear it. Don't that. say that. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying, we're, we're trying to do the best we can with the kids, but we yep. know, you know, what, what we want to teach them. Yeah. No, and again, that's, that's huge. I love that, that you're teaching them, you know, don't say you can. That's, and it's, it's like, I look at some other people out there like Jocko Willink or um, Patrick Bet David, some other huge entrepreneurs, you know, ex military guys, you know, Navy SEALs, whatever. And they talk about that same exact thing that you're talking about, which is, you, you got to have, you got to force some adversity in your kid's life because, you know, mm-hmm. now we have generations that have built this country so well, and, and it's such a great country that it's easy. It's too easy. You know, it's so like, you got to have some adversity in your life and kids aren't going through much adversity in their life anymore. So you have to like manufacture some adversity in their life, whether it's pushing the car or going out for a run in the middle of the night, like manufacture adversity, make mm-hmm. it hard. When you're, when you're saying hi to somebody, like make, look them in the eye, make, say hi, you know, say you're sorry, say please, thank you. Yeah. Make sure you're doing those things. I think that's huge, huge. Cool. Um, yeah. What, um, so hopping back again, or, or, you know, really quick, actually, well, your, your family, so your family did, I don't know a ton, a ton about your siblings. I know, I know, the, I know the siblings and stuff like mm-hmm. that, but they did some different stuff too athletically, didn't they? Like your, I think, did your father play hockey growing up and, and did some stuff and your siblings, what did they all do? What was their, yeah. um, their path like just real quickly? Yeah. My, 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 my dad played hockey. My brother played hockey. Uh, uh, both brothers played hockey and my sisters were about as athletic as anybody in the world. I mean, they played, I, I mean, they were, they were high school athletes in soccer, volleyball, basketball, yeah. softball, track i mean they did every single sport there was in in high school and you know it's pretty amazing how how good they were athletically um yeah. you know i was the youngest sibling so i got to go and watch every single sport event there was <laughs> um <laughs> so i got carried and watched watch there so i got to watch them and, and and hey i learned a lot from them you know i learned a lot of, of things yeah. to do and not to do watching them also and I, I was always that kid who uh, I was probably the worst younger brother because I was always that younger kid who critiqued everyone. Like, you know, if, if my yeah. sister didn't work hard enough, I would probably after the game be like, oh, you didn't work hard, you know, like, <laughs> like get <giving laughs> it to her, getting her in trouble. But yeah, but, it's, it, but they, they were, my sisters were, you know, even now they still are workaholics. So that, that's why I bring up how we were raised because I watch, you know, not only my sisters, my brothers, we, we all have a, work ethic that I, I know each one of us will push through any adversity there is because we have that work ethic to get through and we have that determination um, yeah. that I don't think that it's just born uh, that was built when we were younger we you know we watched our parents do it and then we emulated it and and, and did it ourselves because I look at all their lives and and all of them you know they should be proud of how hard they work and I'm not worried at all because I think all of them will push through any adversity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, like, again, I, I, I love having you on here and talking about some of this stuff because, you know, as you know, in the hockey world, and uh, it's just one of those things where there's a, a lot of uh, people that, you know, it's, it's generally a, a wealthier sport. A lot of people that gravitate to it, that have wealth because it's, it's an expensive yeah. sport. And then it's just, that's the truth of it. So I love hearing some of the stuff you talk about because it's just so applicable to today and what people are going through yeah. or not going through, I guess, and not having adversity in their life and the stuff that you went through. And it's really, it's really a model for life. And there, there are people out there, as we all know, that they make it and kind of get, they kind of skate through for lack of a better phrase. And they, they make it to their goal and that well, it wasn't that hard. And you know, they, they knew people and like you still have to perform and do stuff, but maybe their path was a lot easier, things like that. So like, I love your story so much because 
it yeah. really is. It's that American dream. It's the you know, freedom is free. It's the American dream. It's, yeah. it's you know working your butt off every single day. Have mindset every single day, choosing your thoughts. And like you said, now you're doing that. And we'll we'll kind of wrap on you know uh, for a few minutes maybe on you know what you're doing now in the NHL and stuff like that. But also more importantly, your kids. You know, like what you said, the family, the kids, and what you're doing with the next generation. Um, that is the most important thing. And I think that what you're, what you're doing is just incredible. And, uh, I just, I, I commend that. So. Thank you. Well, you know, you know, what's amazing that, you know, what I, you, you know, you always hear people say, Oh, I wish I could skip to the NHL draft. I wish I could skip to playing in the NHL that everybody wants to fast forward their lives. But, and, and I, and I've, mm-hmm. I've had this question asked me, they always say like, Oh, how, how what did your first NHL game felt feel like? I don't remember my first NHL game, but I know what every single day felt like getting there. You know, yeah. there's something about the adversity you go through is what you're always going to remember because you learn much more through that adversity than you do in your first NHL game. That's, yeah. you know, to me, the first NHL game meant nothing. It's every single day that led up to it meant everything because I know, yes. you know, the ups and downs and, and how hard you had to battle to get there. Yeah. But people forget about that process. They don't want that process because it's too hard. Um, mm-hmm. They try to they try to move past that process, but they, they keep forgetting that process is what defines you and, and makes you who you are. So don't skip it. That's that's the fun part, man. That process is the fun part. Dude, yeah, I'm I'm writing that down. So I've been taking notes the whole time you're talking. So like that's that's one thing I love. The process defines defines you, and that's that is so. Like, I hope everyone, if one, if people can take one thing away, I hope it's that because I think like, you know, again, in our society, we keep harping on our society nowadays, our culture, but it's, you know, everyone wants that easy pill. They want that one diet pill. They want that one thing. They don't have to put the work in. And when you, the result isn't actually what you're seeking in life. Like that's the kind of like the secret I feel like that successful people know is you're, you're going for that process. And that's the, that's what changes you and defines you, not the actual result, not the actual end thing. So it's, you know, yep. that's so cool you said that because that's, I hope people take that away from this because that's, that's huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. What, um, so transitioning now, kind of wrap up for, for a few minutes here and, and talk about kind of what you're doing now, just kind of NHL, um, your kind of path there, the, you know, you played, obviously started in Buffalo, um, you know, and then you're in Carolina and you've had, like you said, adversities, ups and downs, all that. Now you're in Columbus. Um, and so kind of just, you know, talk about that for a minute or two and just kind of what that's been like, obviously there's probably a lot of people watching that love that aspect of it. And, uh, and, and want to hear maybe some, you know, some, yeah. uh, of about that, just kind of how that process was. But, uh, what are some, you know, like I said, what, I mean, some stories, but also again, some adversities, some things you've learned, um, and, uh, you know, maybe a highlighter and a low, a low light. <laughs> yeah, this, uh. It's, it's, it's been a journey. It's been, you know, it's crazy how fast it goes. Cause it's, it's been, it's 12 years of professional now. Um, yeah, it's crazy. and it, it flies by and, uh, I, I, I truly enjoy every moment of it. Um, because I know one day it'll be over, but it's, it's, you know, starting off and, and going to Buffalo for, I think I was in Buffalo for five years. You know, you think you're going to be in the organization forever. Cause that's where you're yeah. drafted. That's where you start. Um, I ended up having a back surgery. Um, I missed maybe seven months, uh, came back, tried to play, then ended up getting bought out. And then that, that was a really low point for me because, you know, coming from the back surgery, how hard that was, I didn't know how good I could be or if I could even play um, physical again. Can I train the same way? Um, a lot of questions go through your mind, a lot of doubt. But that, that was a defining summer for me. And, a, and another, like we talked about, a little one of those wake-up calls on I need to get to another level of work. Um, and I was fortunate enough to get to Carolina. I got a chance there to play. And ended up having one of my best seasons in my career uh, coming off back, back surgery. Um, I was very fortunate, as I mentioned earlier, to be able to train with Ben Prentice, who trained Martin St. Louis. Yeah. Um, uh, he helped me a ton. He, he redefined to what work was to me. Um, he, he knew I worked hard, but now we needed to be pointed that into a better direction. Uh, yeah. So then he was able to increase that workload for me and help me get to the, get to the next level. And that, that in Carolina I was there for a few years. And then I signed in New York and New York. I, uh, 
I ended up leaving after camp and heading to Switzerland for two years. But that, you know, people always ask me, like, oh, why did you leave New York? For me, that that was personal. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I felt like I went in there. I was, I was told I was given every chance to make the team if I had a good camp. Yeah. I still think today that's my best camp I've ever had in 12 years. And, I, you know, I played really good at a high level. And that, that was personal. And that's a huge reason why I left because I felt like that was a personal decision not, to, not, not having me on their team at the end of camp. And, you know, I ended up going to Switzerland for a couple of years. You know, not the place for me, not the not the mindset for me. Um, you know, people go to Switzerland to enjoy life and enjoy hockey, but hey, that that ain't me. I'm I'm you know, I wanna work, I wanna oh, work every man. day, I wanna push people to work, I want I, I want a battle, I, I want battle and practice. Um so that place wasn't it just wasn't for me. I'm not that mindset's not for me. Um yeah, I like I like things hard, I like things, yeah. I, so coming back here I was able, um and it's funny, I, I kept in contact with Blake Jeffrey on at the time. And, and when I was in Switzerland, he said, are you interested in coming back? And I said, yeah, I'm interested. I'm not really sure at the time I was injured. Um, yeah. Then he said, okay, well, you know, let me know. Then we'll work on getting you back. And fast forward three, four months later, I ended up signing a contract with, with Columbus and, and then I'm getting a chance to play in this organization. And as I said before, I've had seven repairs in the last 15 months of surgery. so. You know, getting the chance this year to play in the NHL was was my first chance in a long time, and right. and a lot of work went into it. Um, yeah, a lot of hard days, but and I always tell people the thing I'm most proud of during this whole 12 year journey was my wife and I. We've never wavered for who we are and for what we stand for, and no, no one's ever deterred me from how hard I want to work or pushed me in a, in a different direction. Um, I've always known what I wanted to do. And I always call it, it's just a standard of life. I don't, I don't have just a standard of hockey. Mine's just a standard of life. Um, the standard of, you know, my relationship with my kids, my wife, my family, my parents, um, the, the work, the love I put into everything that that's just a standard for me. I don't have any other way in my personal life and my hockey life. They're the same. I treat both as the same. They're, they're what I do. They're my job. Um, if people always say, hey, parenting shouldn't be a job. As we know, parenting's a job, man. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, it's, it's a hard job, you know. And, yep. I, and I commend my wife for always, always, always doing it every day yep. so I can do what I want to do and compete and, and do all that. So it's, yeah, it's funny to look back at the journey and people always say, what are you most proud of? And I think that's what I'm most proud of is that we've never wavered from our standard of our life. Um, which has nothing to do with hockey, but that's what we're most proud that's of. Huge. That's really cool. That's, that's, and it's huge that you have that. Cause as, as you know, I mean, there's a lot of people who there aren't standards and it's just like, Hey, yeah. I'm about to see my pants just going with the wind or whatever it may be. So I commend you for doing that. Um, what, um, who are yeah. some of the, um, just uh, some of the lighter questions, like if you will, but, um, favorite guy to well i shouldn't say that but maybe the hardest guy to play against you know it could be a favorite guy to battle against or, or play against but maybe some guys or a couple guys that are like yeah that guy is so hard to play with i was i was talking to drew miller the other day and he playing with that Duke in detroit he was just like and i've talked to uh jack johnson about this before and he was like yeah you know you come down and most guys you're like okay i know what they're doing but like that he didn't even know what he was doing so i don't i don't know how to defend him because he doesn't even know what he's going to yeah. do um, so what are some guys, yeah. some guys are like, I love battling those guys or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's amazing. The, uh, the, it's amazing how many great players there are, but it's amazing how different they are. And I always try to explain mm-hmm. to people, yeah. there are certain players in the NHL. And I think I've only at current NHL, I think I've only counted like six or seven who play off pure IQ and skill. They don't need anything else but that. They don't need mm-hmm. a work ethic. They don't need anything. They have that, and they're that good. Yep. So those guys are just on a different playing level as everybody else. Right. They think the game differently. They're the best in the world. And then you have guys, you know, you look at it, people always think, you know, Sidney Crosby, you know, he, he's not the most skilled, but he, he will, his will and his determination is what sets, sets him apart from everybody else. Because, yeah, he does have skill, obviously, but right. – 
he's not the most skilled guy in the league, but his, he has a different work ethic. And I, I explained to him, like, he's like an unbelievable power for it. He's so strong. Right. So powerful down low. Um, yep. he, he can escape in a second, but then like, you said you have guys like Datsuk who, with an open ice, he's the hardest guy to defend it that I've ever played against in the NHL because you don't know what he's doing, and, yeah. and you're scared. You're scared a little bit to go against him because you don't know what he's doing and what he's going to do to you. So yeah. there's different ways of looking at players in the NHL, and I I love watching. I love learning. Um, I study the game in and out. Uh, I I feel like I know most players and how to defend them, but those those two. You know, just because just because of Crosby's determination and just because of Datsuk's pure skill, those two are probably the hardest I've ever played against. Yeah. Um, but then you have guys up and coming like that Nathan McKinnon, who is a little bit of a mix of a Crosby yeah. with the power yeah. and, and and the drive and determination that he plays with. He's probably been my favorite player to watch uh, in the last couple of years, just because of his his drive is amazing. I I, I appreciate it and. He, and he's a workhorse out there and, and for being that skilled and that good, it's always fun to see. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's uh yeah, really pointed. And I it's it's funny because you think about that, it's it's just life, I guess, right? Like you always have like that like one percent or the one tenth of one percent who are like they're just like the rocket scientists, or they're like they're the they're gonna be the top no matter what, even yeah. if they don't work hard. And then everyone else is like, you gotta work yeah. hard and pile that on top of whatever talent you have, right? So it's like that's yeah. that's always the dynamic. What um, what like what about some uh, defensemen even that you play with? Like like you, whenever you like see pictures of you, people always put you against like Chara, you know, stuff like that. Obviously, and like they, you know, always yeah. do the images and the memes and stuff like that, whatever. But like, what are maybe some defensemen? Whether you know, you know, big guys yeah. could be could be uh, shorter guys too. Um, what are some of the good defensemen that you played with or been yeah. the hardest to to beat or you know in the corners with? Yeah, I think I think to yeah, going against Chara is always fun because of the physical difference between him and I. But I always people always ask me like, oh, how hard is it to go against Chara? I, I think it's harder for him to go against me. Yeah, for I'm sure. I'm so small that I don't know if I think it's harder for him to push down and yep. he's so big that I, I think it's hard. Yep. Um yep. but to go back to when I first started is playing against like a Nick Lidstrom is just someone I've always watched growing up and, and admired and then to be on the ice with him i mean there's zero chance you can get around this guy he he's not <laughs> physical he's just so much smarter than you and then anyone and it's amazing i remember i remember my first game in detroit i was so pumped because my family was coming i finally get to play in detroit yep. i don't even think i've come close to touching the puck the whole night <laughs> and i remember after the game i was like that was the worst game i've ever played in my life like you know but that's a reason because guys the, like him are so smart moment. And now I, now I, I was, oh my God, their, 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 their IQ level is off the chart. But a guy who I play with now, um, who I've learned to admire is Seth Jones, um, who has just yeah. the ability to com completely turn a game around. Um, he has the presence to calm a game and he has the presence to change the game offensively with his skating ability. Um, I, I've, I've been able, fortunate enough to be able to watch him and, and how he plays and, and how he goes into games. And we, we may be age difference. I mean, I'll be turning 33. I, he may be like, I don't even know, maybe 25. Yeah. But you could still learn a ton from a younger guy. And I, and I, I, I enjoy watching him and his presence on the ice and, and how he, he's able to change a game when he's out there. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. I mean, again, it's, like you said before earlier on, I mean, you can learn something from people that are above you, below you, smarter than you you know, less smart than you, doesn't matter. You can learn something from everybody. So that's, you know, what better people to learn from, especially people that are, are great athletes and, and great players themselves. Um, that's, that's huge, man. Yeah. That's, um, I'm trying to think, the Listrom thing, is that, uh, is he one of those people for sure that's in that, you know, top, obviously five or six people that are the smartest people you've seen? Um, the Seth Jones? Oh, uh, Listrom. Sorry, Nick Listrom. Oh, Listrom. Yeah, yeah. Listrom. Yeah, he played. He played at a different level, right? He he's so smooth and so smart out there that he didn't have to be physical as a D man. Um, he didn't have to go block a hundred shots a year. Um, yeah. he didn't have to do anything but make the passes he did, get shots through the way that he did, 
And we all know as forwards that if you don't have a D-man who can get the puck up the ice, then your offense is going to struggle. And he's obviously one of the best at making that first pass and opening things up. But when you have D-man like that, all of a sudden as a forward, you're like, wow, for some reason I have the puck so much more in the offensive zone or just in the neutral zone with space. But people don't realize, well, that's because, you know, sometimes the D-man out there are good enough to get you that puck. He's definitely, mm-hmm. he's definitely one of those players that, that played off IQ. Yeah, that that's something that you it's if people don't understand hockey, they they you 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 never even get to that point where someone might understand what's going on. But it's because it is a difficult game a lot of times to understand. But one of those things like I always notice when you are watching different levels, whether it's amateur, you know, up to college and then professional or NHL, it is really the defenseman. Like you said, the defenseman control the pace of the game. And if it's you watch like amateur or college and the yeah. defense just sit there with the puck the entire time, they're screwing around with it, and it's just like really slows the game down. Like you said, when you're in the minors or the professional, you know, in the NHL, it's just boom. The defensemen have it, and it's gone. And it's such a different pace of game because of that. And that that's what speeds the game up. So. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's – you know, when you have – and everyone watches these young D-men coming in. I mean, they change the game. Like, the way yeah. they skate, they put the defense on the heel, um, yeah. open space up for forwards just with their ability to skate and, and nice. carry a puck and, and move it. It's, it's amazing how when you see teams who have a dangerous D-man like that, how valuable they are because it, it really does change, change the outcome. It's kind of like the quarterback that yeah. can run in football, yep. right? It, it's yep. all of a sudden a different, it's a different world because it's like, oh, crap, we have to actually watch him. He might yes. run and escape and get 20 yards here, or he can throw, but then we left someone open. So it's kind of like exactly. that mentality as the D-man that if you carry the puck up and have that escapability, then it's like everyone's thinking what's going to happen next. And all of a sudden everything opens up. Yep. What, um, and again, I, there's probably many people that have seen some different, you know, YouTube clips and different highlights of, you know, some goals, breakaway, stuff like that. But you've always been one. Where did you learn just some of the moves you have? I mean, you like ever since I've known you again, since like 10 years old, your hands have been unbelievable off the charts. Where, I mean, is this something you're always practicing, you know, had some innate ability and then just get practicing it? Or how did that, a lot of that kind of come about? Yeah, you know what I start, it's, it goes back to way before my dad used to be in the garage with me. And he always would tell me, work on tricks, like work on tricks. And, mm-hmm. and, and we used to watch everyone play from Wayne Gretzky to Paul Valberry was one of my favorite players. In, and Pierre Forsberg, these guys uh, who were able to make moves and stuff. And my dad used to always tell me, practice, practice. When you get into actual practices, do them. You know, do, do them in practice until you feel comfortable in the game. And don't be, don't be afraid to try it. So it's some moves are something I've always practiced. I've always learned. I'm always watching um, other players. I'm always taking things from them maybe twisting it to something the way I like, but I'm always, always trying to study and learn. Yeah. That, so you, I get, you hit on something really big that we really, I didn't touch on earlier. We kind of forgot to you, which was your dad. We talked about the work ethic side, but you just mentioned it where, was that something you were, it doesn't sound like it, but you were punished or not punished when you made mistakes. Was it more of a work ethic thing when you get in trouble or is it like, Oh, you made mistakes. Now you're in trouble. Oh, peer, peer work ethic. My, my dad never cared huge. about mistakes. Um, that's huge. You know, that's, that's where I think, you know, he, and it's funny, like to fast forward because my dad always had a vision of the game. Um, and I'm sure I battled him when I was younger, but <laughs> he's never changed his vision of the game. And now it's so funny that the NHL is exactly what he visioned my whole life. I feel like, because that's all he preached wow. to me. He just preached to me, you need speed, 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 skill 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 speed that's all he's been said to me my whole life is speed power skill speed power skill that's it that's the only thing lectures wow. i've had and obviously the work ethic but but it's so funny that everybody in the nhl when i first got the nhl it was bigger a little, yeah. a little bit slower yep. uh, but now everybody's just speed and skill speed and skill speed and skill and i always laugh because i'm like man my dad was preaching that to me you know 50 or 20 of like 25 years ago yeah. He was yeah. preaching speed and skill to me, and that's all you need. So yes. it's funny to think back, and that's something I'm definitely, if I ever coach youth hockey or do development of some sort, those two, speed and skill, are, are number one for me as, as far as teaching. That's huge. Um, we'll, we'll wrap up here in, in a second. I know we got to, it's been about an hour, so we've taken a lot of your time. Um, what, um, again, that numerous times throughout the years, putting on you know, the U.S. You know, USA sweater, um, just – 
some thoughts and feelings about what it's like every time you get to, you know, put the red, white, and blue on. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, like we talked about earlier, the things that I'd like to teach my kids and respect was, was high on that chart because I, I have such respect for this country and, and, and putting on that sweater and being able to represent uh, many international tournaments as we've gotten to do together. It, it's a special feeling, you know, when your country calls upon you, you're being chosen as one of the, you know, 22, 23, yeah. you know, top players in that, that age group to be picked for that team. Um, you know, it's special, you know, when you go into those tournaments and you're playing the Russia, you're playing Canada and, and these are huge games that I've only been able to watch on TV through the, you know, the Olympics, the world cup. So to start that at a young age and feel like I'm a part of that rivalry or just building that rivalry and, and being able to compete with the best of the world. And, and we've been very fortunate. We've won most of our tournaments and, and, you know, we've had good teams. So it's, you know, always winning them at the end and hearing your anthem play is always you know, been, been the best feeling. And it's always a team thing. No one's ever, you know, thinking of themselves during that time because you just have one sweater on and that, and that's the sweater that matters. Yeah. Love it, man. Um, and then last thing, um, unless you have anything else to add, um, just kind of the schedule, we talked about it off, off air before we came on here, but just kind of the schedule coming forward, just in case there's people, um, that don't know what the NHL is doing here over the next few months, but, uh, what's, uh, what's the schedule tentatively, I guess. Yeah, just we're getting ready for camp. They've they've come out with the July 10th date. So now I'm just trying to get my body and mind wrapped into that and, and getting that ready, ready to flip the switch. Um, and then uh, hopefully by the end of July, we'll be playing our series. We have Tor Toronto in a five-game series, so it's going to be pretty pretty exciting. Uh, you know, you don't know what to expect coming coming back with, with all this going on here, and, and hopefully everything goes all right and, and everyone's ready to play. Yeah. Good stuff, dude. I mean, I could literally do this for hours and hours and hours and hours with you. Um, I appreciate you spending an hour with, uh, with me and with everybody. And uh, you know, like you said, freedom isn't free. And uh, boy, you are someone that definitely exemplifies that. And uh, I'm just, I'm really glad that you were able to come on and do this. And I just, I respect you more than you, more than you know, since we were 10 years old, since we first, or nine, I guess, since we first met. My first memory, I guess, being being 10. Um, but so I, I just, the respect I have for you is just off the charts and um, just appreciate you a ton, Nathan, seriously. So. Thanks, man. Oh, I, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. And I, I appreciate our relationship since, since a young kid we've battled, but we've uh, been fortunate enough to be on the same team and get to know each other a little bit more, man. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no, of course, dude.